Today we take things a step further, still on our series, The Intricacies of Divine Purpose. And today we are looking at the topic, The Eternal Purpose of God. Our text still remains Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. It reads, For we know that all things work together for good for them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. Father, we thank you for the privilege we have to learn at your feet again. Spirit of the living God, I ask that you release all trance. Let these lips of clay be a vessel to impact life, to illuminate the hearts of men, that your will may be established in our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. When you read through the scriptures, you will see a clear manifestation of the eternal purpose of God in everything that he does. From the ages that preceded the creation of the heaven and the earth, as we saw in Genesis chapter 1, and even after this age that we are in ceases to exist, the purpose of God, the eternal purpose of God remains intact. And when we have an understanding of what this eternal purpose of God is, it will help us to have the bigger picture of what God is doing and also how we can align ourselves with it so that we can get the best that God desires from everything that he does. What is this eternal purpose of God? I'll put it in this simple statement. The eternal purpose of God reveals clearly that there is a desire in God to have a set of beings who will, of their own will, choose to worship him. I'm going to repeat that. The eternal purpose of God is to have a set of beings who will, of their own will, choose to worship him. How did I come to this conclusion? When God made beings that he gave life unto and gave the ability to move around, those who he gave speech and the ability to think and reason unto, he gave them also what is known as free will. Because he doesn't want to have robots existing with him. He wants beings who have a mind of their own and will out of the decision, the capacity that they have, to make decisions because of that free will, they will choose him as the object of their worship. This does not affect only humans. That will make us understand in Isaiah chapter 14, from verse 12 to 15, that there was a being called Lucifer, the morning star, who decided that he was going to rebel against God. We call him Satan today. The only reason why he could choose to rebel against God was because he had a free will. That even makes us understand that he took a thought of the angels that were in heaven with him in this rebellion. The only reason why those angels could go with him was because they had the ability to choose to obey God or to reject God his rulership over them. So when we talk about Gabriel and Michael, who are archangels today, they are not zombies. They are beings who chose to serve God with the abilities and the capacities that he endowed them with. Unlike Lucifer, who chose to rebel against God. So all the beings that are with God today in the heavenlies, they are beings who have that ability to rebel against God, but they chose to worship him, to see him as their king. When you read through the book of Revelations, we saw those who are known as the 24 elders bowing down to worship God. It was because they chose that God will be the one that they will give their full allegiance to, in spite of the fact that they had certain abilities and capabilities. It is this same mindset that God had when he created man and gave him free will. The book of Genesis chapter 2 
and from verse 16 tells us that God gave a clear instruction unto mankind. He said, of every tree that is in this garden, you may freely eat, except the one that is in the middle of the garden. He said, because the day you eat of that tree, you will surely die. God gave free will to mankind. And he needed a platform to be able to exercise that free will. And that was why God placed that tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the midst of the garden. So that man would have that privilege of making that choice to either obey God or to disobey him. If he does not have the opportunity to disobey God, his obedience would not have any value because there has not been anything to compete with God in his life. And if he had chosen to obey God, the outcome would have been completely different, as we saw in the case of our Lord Jesus Christ, who also had the will. When you read the account of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, he said it clearly to us that he was not a zombie. He said, I do not do that which I will. He said, what I see the Father do, that is what I do. Clearly revealing that he had a will, but he chose to submit it to the Father's own. That is a clear indication of what it means to surrender your will to the Father. He came. He had the ability to perform miracles, but he did only that which the Father told him to do. The enemy came and told him to turn stones into bread, but he responded by saying, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God does man live. So it's not a question of whether he had the ability to do it or not. It was whether God approved that he should use that ability that he had given to him to do that he which he wanted to do or not. So God gives will to us as men because he wants us to choose to worship him. For everyone that is on earth yet that has the ability to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, there is also that ability to reject him as Lord and Savior. That is what makes our faith significant and of value because we are using the will that God has given unto us to choose him. We are making conscious effort, a deliberate decision to submit our will to serve the will of the master. Every experience that you have, every temptation you face in this part of life is actually an opportunity for you to choose God or to reject him. That is that thing that you and I are faced with in this part of life. And it's something that we are constantly faced with on a daily basis. Either to choose to do the will of God or do that which either our flesh or the enemy tells us to do. And it does not stop here. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 20 that there's something called the millennial reign, a period of 1,000 years where Jesus Christ will reign and his authority over the entire earth will be absolute. The whole earth at that period of time will be subject to the authority of Jesus Christ. His authority will be absolute from the north to the south, from the east to the west. The whole world will be filled with knowledge of the glory of God even as the water has covered the sea. There will be no war. There will be no quarrel. The animals will even dwell safely with men. That is how absolutely the authority of Jesus Christ will be during that millennial reign of a thousand years. But the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 7 to 10 that at the end of these 1,000 years, Satan, who had been bound for that 1,000 years, will be released again. And he will still be able to deceive people to rebel against God. Why? Because people will still be given the opportunity to decide whether they want to continue under the reign of this Christ or 
they want to do something else. So Satan will present them with an opportunity, an alternative to God. And all those who follow him at that time will end up in the lake of fire. It will be an opportunity for the earth to be purged of all those who have been grumbling during that millennial reign, who are saying they don't want to stay under the leadership of Jesus Christ. So God has always had that desire. What is this desire? To have a set of beings who will of their own free will choose to worship him. When this choice has been tested and the people have chosen God, then they will reign with him forever without sin and without any form of guilt or shame, without any temptation coming to derail them again. I believe that this has been sorted out in the heavenly realms right now. Michael, Gabriel, and many of the angels that are still doing the will of God right now have passed that test because the enemy that tried to deceive them has been cast down away from where he could have access to them anymore. It's the same thing that is going to happen at the end of this millennial reign. When Satan, that deceiver, the dragon, the serpent, with all those who choose to obey him and do his bidding, when they will be cast into the lake of fire, where they will not be able to trouble the world anymore. From that point onward, it will be righteousness throughout and for all of eternity. God would have achieved his eternal purpose, having a set of beings who have chosen to worship him, and as a result, they have been empowered to do so for all of eternity. How does this apply to you? Every opportunity you have to choose God and to reject the enemy is an invitation for you to come and experience the eternal life of God. Every time the enemy tempts you and presents you with an option to turn away from God and you rise above it, what you are signing up for is the power of the afterlife. The joys that are with all those who worship God. In the book of Matthew, chapter 4 and verse 11, after the temptation of Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us that the angels came and ministered unto him. He overcame the devil in the flesh and then he enjoyed the power of heaven ministering unto him. The same thing happened when he was about to go to the cross. It was a difficult time for him. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 22 and verse 43 that he prayed and asked that if it was possible, God should take this cup away from him. But at the end of it, he said, not my will, but your will be done. And the Bible says, and an angel came and strengthened him. The power of heaven was released into his life. Because he chose to do the will of God. There is a lot more for us as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Every time we are confronted with temptations, know that it is the power of the endless life that is at stake. When we choose God, we are ushered into a place where we are able to experience the life of God in a dimension that we have not known it before. Why? Because we have chosen him. That will is still with us. The temptations are real and they are bound. But for every time we choose to follow God in the face of temptation, we are introduced into a new dimension of the release of the power of God for us to operate with, even while we are here on earth. And if we hold on and endure unto the end, consistently making the choices that please the Father, then we will eventually come into that place where we'll be able to reign with Christ for all of eternity, enjoying all the privileges that God has prepared for you and I, even before the foundation of the world. We will enter into the fullness of our inheritance. But 
we have to begin that practice from now. So what is your response to those temptations? God has a purpose for them. The same way he had a purpose for leaving that tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden of Eden. It is for that same reason that he has not pulled you away from this earth so that your choice, your will can be aligned with his own. So that you can be proven as someone who has contributed your own quota to that qualification that makes you one that can reign with Christ for all of eternity. So you need to learn to respond correctly to every temptation. When you falter, never make excuses for them. Never put up a defense. Repent quickly and return to the Father, knowing that there is something greater that is at stake. The Father is consistently proving our choices. He's consistently preparing us to be able to reign with him so that when principalities and powers try to challenge his justice, he will show them that we are not just chosen for no reason, that we were also proven by the opportunities that he gave unto us. It is my prayer that every opportunity that comes your way to choose God, you will respond to it correctly so that you can reign with him for all of eternity. Father, we thank you for the privilege we have to learn at your feet. We thank you for your word that has come yet again. Thank you for your truth that has impacted in us, telling us what your eternal purpose is and how relevant it is to us. We ask that there will be an abundant supply of this grace so that we will always choose you in the face of every temptation, qualifying us even in the little way we can to reign with you for all of eternity. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed.